shop powering on. It's a highly secured area. You shall not pass. Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. What we've got here is a 2011 Hyundai Elantra. Customer states that the engine has a cold start rattle noise. 162,638 approximate miles in the odometer. Let us initiate engine starting sequence and witness our cold start rattle noise. Runs a little rough too, and looky here, we've got a service engine soon warning indicator illuminated. All right, swing this into the shop, expedite this process, and see what's going on here. I, I suspect it's got a uh, faulty or a loose timing chain tensioner, but uh, we shall see. Powering down. Okay, engine cover, you're coming with me. I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, valve cover off. I want to uh, get a look at the timing chains chain. Become disconnected now, please, connector. In fact, all these connectors have to go because this whole bang right here is going to be removed. Alrighty, let's zip this valve cover off and see what our chains are looking like. That's number four. Three, two, coils look good. So far, so good. Out of bolt, I think the cover is ready to come off. There it is. I saw it move. Oh, forgot one. It was hiding. I think I may have found the culprit for that noise, and I do believe it's the phaser on this exhaust cam right here. Let's try to turn it. I, I did this earlier and it turned quite a bit, but I don't know if it, uh, it's gonna give me enough slack to, to show you guys, let's see. Now that's the 
tensioner being depressed by the chain. And what I had done is turned the cam. The phaser stayed and the cam actually rotated within the phaser so the phaser moved. And it remained locked in that forward position. So I, I do believe our issue is in the phaser itself. Uh, that being said, that's part of the kit that we're gonna order to replace uh, this timing system on. So uh, let's get to it. There's gonna be a lot of work to get done here. All right, I'd like to get this uh, serpentine belt out of the way. I've gotta pull the crank pulley off of this at some point and I uh, can't do that with the belt on. So we're gonna loose all the alternator bolts. The belt tension is maintained by way of this tensioning device on the alternator right here. So we have to take that loose, back the thread out, then the alternator will move down and that's gonna give me some uh, relief on the belt and then we can pull the belt off. Get on there. And we're loose. Later moved. Become disconnected now. Ding, yeah. belt is done. Interrupted by the phone. So it, it may not be necessary, but I'm gonna remove this alternator just to give me some more space to maneuver myself around. Having extra maneuvering space couldn't hurt here. Let's go ahead and slide this guy out. Come out. Come out. There. One nader got a floor jack in place supporting the engine. I'm going to go ahead and pull this mount out next because it's in the way. That's one. pulley is next. I failed to break the bolts loose with the belt still on it, so I've got to install a tool to hold the pulley so I can uh, remove the bolts. I did that backwards twice. There. Reverse clicks in action. Got him. All right. Now I just pull the bolts out. And then the pulley will drop three. Well, we don't want to drop it. That's how we do stuff. Holy freedom achieved. Okay, moving down below. Let's get the uh, crankshaft pulley bolt out. That was easy. Come here. Many people ask me how I keep track of all the nuts and bolts and whatnot. And uh, what I do is I just place the fasteners with the component that they attach. That way, each component has its own fasteners with it and uh, I don't get them mixed up or confused or lost. Okay, back up top again. Let's start pulling the bolts that hold the cover to the block. 
Down below, there's a few more fasteners I can get to. We'll get all the easy ones first, and then we'll go in by hand and get the hard ones. It appears all these are two different lengths. We got short ones and long ones, and gravity ones. Oh, there's a long one. Ooh, an oily one. perfect opportunity for uh, my oddball gear driven tool it's basically a 3 8 extension with a chain chain driven not gear driven it's got a gear here a gear here and a chain and when you rotate the drive side it turns the driven side so we can get into those hard to reach bases check this out aha this is one of those tools where I no idea why I bought it when I bought it. But it comes in useful on occasion. Especially when used in conjunction with low profile sockets. Three more bolts. All right, looks like three or four more, uh, four more bolts. This guy's out of here. Come there. Didn't even have to finish. Hmm, okay. No more space for my tools. We're gonna have to do this one manually. Reverse clickage. one hiding it is now exposed make that two that is hiding or that are hiding sneaky little 10 millimeter Okay, I believe I have all of the bolts out. Let's uh, let's apply some forward pressure to this. Let's see if it's gonna come off. Okay. It is moving. Well, we don't want to overflex it in case there's a hidden fastener somewhere it's holding us up. Wiggle, come on, come off. I bet it has dowel pins. They're hanging on to it. And of course, this is very gently like I am uh, not using the pry bar to its maximum capacity. Just as I expected. There's the dowel pin right there. That sneaky little guy. That's what's hanging us up. We'll let that soak for a while. Back down below, I'm still kind of struggling with this cover. It's being reluctant. To release because it's sealed on with a RTV sealant and that stuff is not one to let go. There we are. Aha! Loosey goosey. There's our cover. That's what we want. Come on out of there. There 
go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alrighty, everybody. Back in action again. I have been out for a week. Today is my, my first day actually back in the shop. And uh, this Hyundai is still here waiting on me. I started this like two weeks ago. And uh, due to some parts, delivery failures, and a couple other unforeseen, unfortunate uh, circumstances, has left this thing here for way too long. So I'm gonna pick up kind of where I left off, wherever that is, and uh, get this timing chain and these phasers replaced. I've already got it rolled around to TDC on number one. The marks are set up where they're supposed to be. You've got a mark here, a mark here, and then the crankshaft mark is lined up with this reference down below. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull the tensioner and we're gonna lose these chains. As soon as I get the chain off, I'll get these phasers pulled and then I can clean the face of this block and then uh, we'll talk about reassembly after that. There we go. Come on out, tensioner. Oh, that stuff moved. That's okay. All right, let's get down in the depths over here and get this guide removed. I think it's just the one bolt right here. Yep reverse clickage. That was a good one. Again, I'm going to stick true to my plan of keeping the fasteners with their corresponding components. That way I know where everything goes when it's time to reassemble. Come out, you. our guide. Okay, this guy right here is fixed. But there are two more fasteners that hold this one on. So let's pull those guys off right now. here about uh, getting these sprockets removed. Hold that right there and reverse clickage. There she comes. Exhaust phaser, you're up. Unclickage. Come here. Loose. Beautiful. Razor blade off some of this old sealant, and I can prep the surface for uh, for some new sealant. Most of it's gone. There's just this thin film of whatever's left. It's all got to go. A little bit right here, a bunch of it over here on this side. make it nice and shiny. Uh, 
All right, we're getting pretty nice and shiny so far. Just using a towel to pull off the remaining residual sealant that's uh, left over on a few spots on this. There we go. I'll get the rest from the bottom side. Oh yeah, we like. Awesome. And now for the moment I've deprived you all of for like a week or so. Extra shiny. That's a two for one. Oh yeah. Alrighty. Now this is as clean as it's gonna get. I've already cleaned off the cover. I didn't record that to save us all some time, but we're getting our uh, new sprockets slash phasers installed. That is next on my hit list. These phasers are aligned to the camshaft with this little dowel pin inside of here and there's a hole drilled in the end of the cam that that pin is supposed to ride in. And that's what references the uh, sprocket to the camshaft. Go ahead and snug these down a little bit. I'll pork them in a moment. Pre click. Okay, as soon as we're done with loud noises, we can torque this to 50 foot pounds. Uh, both bolts are at 50. That is the specified torque amount. See here. That should be good. That will hold it. Preparing for actual picks. Excellent. Clickage achieved. Okay, let's go ahead and get one of the guides in. This is the fixed guide. Two bolts and it is secure. Click. Get this guy in next. All right, next up, we're gonna hang the chain. Now we will see here. All right, phone. All right, phone. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna see here that this thing has colored links. There's one here, one here, and then another down here towards the bottom. See right there? Now these links are gonna line up with the dots that are on the gears themselves. There's one, other one's over here, and there's a, another dot down in the crank pulley. So what we do is we line the chain up with the dots, and that indicates that uh, proper camshaft timing has been achieved. set this rear cam up first because I need to get the chain into the guide there and now I can go down below 
and get that bottom link lined up with its dot. Kind of a tight squeeze down here. And here's our dot right there. I hope you can see it. And there's our colored link. Uh, it's not lined up yet. And let's try to put that in position like so. And what I'm going to do is just hit you guys with a wrench. I'm going to rotate this crank to take up some of the slack here after I hit you with the wrench again. There's all of our slack taken up. That's, well, most of it, okay. Okay, back up top. Let's pull this tight. All right, the mark is lined up down below. And we are off a few teeth on this intake cam. Stay. Okay, let's do this again. Pull the slack. Okay, crank is lined up with its mark. Right there. That's what we want. Aha. There's a glare of it. Now you can see marks lined up with its dot. That mark is lined up with its dot. Very good. Lined up with its dot. Okay, back up top. Now that everything is set up and timed properly, let's get the uh, tensioner installed. Now, right now, the tensioner is compressed. This little grenade pin right here is holding it in. Do -do -do -do. And once I pull that pin, tension will set, and that's that. Chain is installed. Doo -doo -doo. Click. Okay, time for some tensioner clicks. Good. Let's see, one quick recheck of the marks. Line and line. These two marks are pointed at each other. That's good. And down here, the link and the mark is good. That's it, we're set. Chain is set up. Hey guys, this repair is tragically crashing and burning. I'm not going to be able to finish this car in one shot, or this video for that matter, because I just found out that I'm missing two of the O-rings that are supposed to seal the oil pump. So without those O-rings, we're kind of dead in the water. That being said, I've already ordered a new set, but it looks like this is going to have to be a two-part series. As always, thank you guys for watching, and most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later.